today we got an under the call of MS podcast episode. I know I didn't do get one out last week. It's kind of hard getting certain episodes out every week <laughs> when you also got long things that take multiple episodes, like the previews, which I put out last week, and that takes up what four, five, six, uh, six to eight days, depending on how many things I come across in the catalogs to talk about. It's so like can waste a whole week and that kind of like takes away from doing the MS episodes, the regular. I'd like to, I, like I said, once a week, like on Thursdays or something, I'd like to have the under the call of MS weekly talk about whatever episode out. And then one day a week for at least the MS stuff and then the rest of the week and weekend set up for the previews and reviews and all that unpackings, unboxing, all, all that stuff. But I just got many episodes that I'm putting out there and then with the issues I had the past couple of weeks, I didn't get a lot of ep- episodes out that I planned on getting out. So it's Kind of like getting a little behind uh, and having to redo episodes over and over have been <laughs> killing me. <laughs> Just wasting so much freaking time <laughs> redoing episodes two, three, four times. That can definitely uh, wear you down and screw things up, <laughs> especially when. Yeah, enough stuff out that you can put out seven days episodes out there seven days a week and still not have enough room to get enough stuff out. But I am behind, so that's why we're trying to get caught up on these episodes. Uh, see if I can remember much of what's been going on. I did uh, come across Futurama. I noticed they got new episodes out. I was very surprised. Uh, there was a couple podcasts recently that I follow that had uh, Katie Seagal on. And then uh, she was talking about the whole Futurama's, what, fourth, fifth reboot now between all the different stations that had it, dropped it, and then the fans begged to bring it back, and they brought it back on a different platform. Or station and they kept it going. Uh, it's been, I decided to do a rewatch of it. I never really followed Futurama enough to get all the episodes or fought, or watch it on a regular basis or anything. So I didn't know completely everything that was going on. I'm sure I knew stuff uh, in the beginning episodes, just like the beginning of Simpsons and all the other animated series the characters had some goofy voices and Fry's voice was a little weird in the beginning they fixed that uh i didn't i don't remember knowing that the old guy is Fry's great 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 grandson or something like that the old scientist dude uh but i do remember the episode where he made a kid from his cells and the old man did uh the old scientist remember that episode so i should have known i'm sure i did know that they're related but i didn't it's just re-watching the whole thing and getting the stuff from the first season all up to date it was nice uh caught up on the episodes that i don't think i ever seen and uh i'm into season three now about halfway through season three but it's nice that they got some new newer ones out there that i didn't know about so i figure what the heck i'll check it out see if i can get into it uh and i've been having fun with it so not bored with them a good background noise i'm just doing whatever i don't have to pay attention i can wander in and out of the room not worry about what's up with the story and get caught up easily enough. 
but it's fun, better than what I remember. And I know when it first came out, I wasn't big on it. I couldn't really get into the whole Futurama stuff. Uh, it was it was like all of them. Family Guy I didn't get into big at the beginning, but it gradually picked up. Simpsons was probably the one that I liked the most from the start. But yeah, they all have their own little own little quips. Uh show that I don't know if I mentioned it all, the Burns Burns and Allen show with George Burns and Gracie Allen. Such a fun couple, fun show uh from back in the day. Seeing the young George Burns and he's got all his old man quips. But those cigars and all that, you definitely get the George Burns feel from them. But it's just the Gracie Allen character. I, I got to find some more of her stuff from back in the day. Uh, if she's as fun as she is on that show, so goofy. I love how they do the little thing where if uh, George knows some something's going on, something's awry. He'll turn his TV on and he can watch the show that they're doing. They can, he can watch earlier parts of the show and see what what kind of little scheming Gracie's up to or one of the other characters that works with him in, in the TV business, the Hollywood roles. Uh, he's basically works in the entertainment field in that storyline and they have a son and it's a really fun show it's just I they do they have that thing where he can watch the TV and go back in the episodes to find out what's going on when he knows something's awry uh, the end of every show him and Gracie do a little talk and they Gracie does her little little storyline things that end up being jokes and it's it's really fun how they do it it's uh, if you want to see some old george burns check that out uh young george burns but yeah the burns and allen show lots of fun i i, I really enjoyed it uh i tried to check out monster nato uh not sure if that was on netflix or not netflix Amazon Prime, I think, is where I had that. I'm pretty sure. I don't think it was on Cinemax. Uh, Skinemax. But, uh, yeah, it's like I got all excited. Monster Nato, it had prehistoric beast in it. In the tornado and stuff, along with your sharks and your alligators. And all this other stuff. But then you're sitting there watching it. And the people that they had involved in the storyline with the people. They're terrible actors, and you got two FBI agents that are undercover hookers, and they're arresting some Mark, some John, that they're they set up in an apartment, and and they come down and get together with the group of people that are trying to hide from this monster NATO inside this hotel type place, and. They're wanting out, but the guy doesn't want to let the valet or whatever doesn't want to let him out of the hotel. He's like, I'm not opening the door again. And all of a sudden you see this octopus slam against one of the windows. You see this other weird looking creature that gets trapped in the revolving door area. And uh, one person that owns the hotel mentions that they have specialized glass. It's Detective glass, so at least it'll take some work before they destroy it. And then you got the dumb undercover agents that start shooting the glass because they see the octopus and get scared. <laughs> it's a, it's a giant octopus. It, it's a normal sized octopus to me. <laughs> it doesn't look like a giant octopus. It's basically covering, not even covering one window pane. So yeah, they shoot that, and so they. Weaken the glass. I didn't watch it. 
much beyond that, so I couldn't tell you if the glass broke or how the creatures got in. I'm sure something stupid like that happened. Then they all get it back or whatever. Who knows? Uh, the basic concept is that the hurricane or tornado, water tornado, water hurricane, NATO, whatever you want to call it, started in the Bermuda Triangle, and that's why all these strange beasts are part of it. I mean, none of these beasts were on land, so they got sucked up from the water. So you got pterodactyls and all these other dinosaurs and alligators and I mean land animals and stuff. And yeah, you got the water animals, the shark stock with stuff like that. But it's like a lot of them are land type animals and they're caught in this tornado. It's like what? Are these land animals living in the bottom of the ocean and they got sucked up, all these dinosaurs and stuff? I mean, wouldn't they have, have to have been living on land somewhere in the Bermuda Triangle? And someone would have found them and seen that there was a island full of dinosaurs and all these strange creatures that, uh, you know, where you ex- what they explained for how they, they came from or where they came from. You had one guy that's a scientist that's, the scientist for this type of thing and he knew what was going on and why it's there and what's happening tried to explain it but yeah it's like the scientist guy wasn't too bad but every other character that i seen up to the point that i gave up on the movie just sucked and <laughs> did not belong behind the camera and they were just terrible actors and actresses so it was not overly thrilled with that i gave up on it i was really bummed knowing that monster nato it sounded fun it's like shark nato with a bunch of other creatures and just sharks and yeah i mean people stood watching this thing that was a uh, hundred yards off the coast coming right at them with all these creatures flying in and out of this tornado and they just stood on the side of the dock or the beach or whatever and just waited for it to come up to them and let them get devoured by the creatures that are spinning around in it. I mean, they didn't run or nothing. It's just, it was really stupid. (laughs) Twice that happened up to the point that I gave up watching it or people were just standing there watching this thing just waiting to be eaten. I mean, (laughs) It's just stupid. But yeah, I tried. Uh, Didn't know that the NFL playoffs started last week. I knew, but I forgot. And we were in uh, week two. Of course, my team's getting their ass kicked like usual. Uh, But I just... I don't know what's up. I don't. They have some new rules. I don't know what all the rules are yet. I know there's one new rule where when you kick and they receive, you have to kick the ball within the zero to twenty yard line, and they have to return it, which is nice. There's no fair catch crap anymore in the twenty yard first twenty yards, but. I noticed if they do kick it into the end zone and they go fair catch, that it starts on the 30-yard line now instead of the 20. And if they don't kick it within the first 20 yards, if the ball doesn't land within that first 20 yards, then the receiving team automatically gets the ball on the 40. And it's just, it's really stupid rules, but yet I like the part where they have to return it no matter what. That I was happy about, and I was interested into it until I watched a couple more games, and then I learned about that whole thing where if they miss the mark on a kick, that it starts them on the 40. It's like, that, that's a big give. To go all the way to the 40-yard line, you're already within, what, 15, 20 yards of field goal range? That's 
that makes no sense. Uh, even starting them on the 30, if they call a fair catch in the end zone, I don't know why they'd change that. Why wouldn't you have just kept it at the 20? But this is mostly a comics podcast. I don't want to get too deep on sports, but I do like to mention things every now and then. Uh, <laughs> someone's going to mess with something of mine that I have laying down for a reason. She's got to always stand it up. And I've told her over and over. So now I'm going to have to make her go back out and put it back the way it was. It's like, I have it laying down for a reason. It's like, why do you got to touch my stuff? (laughs) All right. Also been checking out sports wise or talking sports anyways, the Olympics. Uh, Had the summer Olympics going on. I just, for background noise, late at night, we just turn it on, just get caught up, see where where the U.S. was sitting with the medal count and all that stuff. Uh, We sat there, and the diving events, the synchronized diving were pretty interesting. I watched those. I didn't catch any of the floor events or any of that stuff. Uh just highlights from it got some stupid sh- two-person shooting with like pellet guns that was pretty boring <laughs> volleyball events yeah not 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 that exciting but i watched them uh most exciting part was watching these gals with their skimpy bikinis and they're sitting there arguing over things and as they're arguing up at the net sit there and it's like their underwears three quarters up their butt crack it's like straighten out your underwear it's like what the hell you're representing a country you're arguing at the net and you got your most of your swimsuits up your butt they just <laughs> I think they could choose better outfits for these people. Uh, the I think it's a new event, but they allow a break dancing this year. I didn't catch any of it. I got the highlights of the people that were in it, but I didn't get to catch the actual events how they went. I wanted to. I was hoping to catch some of that. I don't know if it's going to be brought back in four years or not. They are doing, uh, uh, what the heck is it? Uh, I can't think of them now, but they got like a few, half a dozen of new events that are going to be in the next Olympics. They're going to pull a couple out. I don't know if they're going to pull this one out or not. The break dancing event because I don't think it went over as good as they expected, but we'll see. Uh, I think boxing, I think, is one that they're talking about pulling in the future, which surprised me because boxing is like one of the original events from the Olympics. I wouldn't think that they'd pull that. It'd be nice to see him bring MMA into it. But uh, the thing I liked the best was I, I'm more of a Winter Olympics person, winter events. But uh, it was really fun catching. I accidentally caught the last three minutes of the gold medal U.S. versus France, I believe it was, basketball game. And uh, Francis was ahead, I think, when I caught it, or they were barely behind. And then uh, the last three minutes, Stephen Curry, I think he hit four three-pointers. And they ended up winning the gold medal and stuff, but it was just awesome watching that last three minutes. It was really fun seeing that. Girls basketball, there was some fun events with that. Also, I mean, the guys, guys, what, I think the last five Olympics, they placed gold. 
but the girls have taken the gold medal every year since 1992, I believe it is. And, uh, yeah, it was enjoyable watching both the girls and guys basketball games, the part, the games I did catch, the part of the games I've caught were really enjoyable. But, yeah, that last three minutes of the gold medal match with the U.S. and France, that was that was really fun watching Steph, and he was having a good time. But yeah, I always like. Stephen Curry, he's always fun to watch. Uh, but yeah, had to check out some Olympics at least. And <laughs> a representative our country, you gotta at least support them a little bit. Uh, thing I was surprised to hear about with the San Diego Comic Con, they had a human trafficking sting go on. I think they caught. I think they busted like 13 human human traffickers and saved like 10 people that they already kidnapped. And it's like, really? And they're doing it that in such a big public event like that. And we're not hearing about it till this year. Apparently it's been a problem every year. It's like, why haven't we been hearing about this? And people that are going to the event, I'm sure would like to know. But I, this is the first year that I heard anything about that. I, I get it. People dressed up, cosplay and all that. Easy to easy to suck people in and get them to go somewhere with you. And then you kidnap them. I can see that happening. But I am really surprised that this is the first year that we're hearing about it. Uh, I don't know if this is the first year they did this thing. I would assume... The way they were talking, that they've done it in past years. But yeah, 13 human traffickers and 10 people that were already kidnapped. And thankfully, they busted them and saved them. Uh, air show here. Yay. I wanted to spend more days out trying to get some more videos. What was going on? Lots of planes going over. Lots of things happening, but we uh, ended up having 90 degree weather all that week, and it just put my body down. And then the weather changed and cooled off, and then shut my body down in a different manner. But don't need to talk about that here. That's I say that crap for my MS podcast, but yeah, that's why I didn't get more more of the plane planes in the background outside videos done uh hopefully now that the weather's nicer i can start doing some more of them again but we'll see what happens even though the weather's nicer it's a different type of problems that i'm dealing with at the moment uh we had the air show events we had german fest and all that going on summer fest uh polish fest everything's happening at the same time uh throughout july and august or some of our biggest events like that they had harley davidson's anniversary uh the weekend at the air show ended so with that summer fest and the air show going on there was a lot a lot of stuff happening within 30 miles of us both directions lots of interesting things uh trying to finish up star wars the bad batch on disney channel disney plus uh, we got that right now again because we did the hulu disney plus cinemax uh package now that they have that instead of Doing the ESPN one since it's summertime, there's I'm more into the winter ESPN with the hockey and everything. But uh, yeah, we sat there and got that package, and I've been trying to catch up on the Bad Batch. Finish that off. I still have like half the final season. I just didn't want to burn them up all at once because I really like that show. It's one of my favorite animated Star Wars 
uh, storylines with the clones, the oddball clones, the clones that are rebellious, and then uh, oh, Omega, the little girl clone that's being hunted down, and they're trying to protect her. It's, it's a fun group of characters. I really like that show. It's one of my one of the few favorites from the Star Wars universe that I like. Uh, I get I'm trying to do the acolyte. I haven't heard it yet. I wanna, but there's so many, so many opinions that I've heard about it so far that I just feel like it's not gonna grab me. It's too slow. I'm gonna get bored with it right away. But we'll see what happens. I will at least try a few episodes. Uh, but, again, it was a while since I had Disney+. Plus. There's nothing new on there except for the Acolyte. And a couple things from the past and some new Star Wars Jedi Council or something. Which I haven't checked out either yet. But, it's like after this long of a period... There should be some fun new stuff on there. It's just all old things. I and I right now before I started this, I'm halfway through Running Cool, the making bobsled movie. Watch rewatching that for like the hundredth time. <laughs> it's always like that one. And then uh or cool runnings, I should say. <laughs> Running Cool is a biker movie that I like. <laughs> A biker movie with the parodying of the redneck idiots fighting with the bikers and all that. Uh, <laughs> little storyline with it, but I like the characters. And <laughs> it's got its fun parts. Uh, but yeah, Cool Runnings is the one. Jamaican bad sled team that I'm watching. Feel the rhythm, feel the rhyme. Go world, it's Bob's Ed time, or whatever the heck. You say. Uh, yeah, it's old fodder to play in the background. I also checked out Danny Glover's stand up HBO special, which I apparently never seen in the past, which I'm surprised seeing something with him doing stand up. I didn't know, know that he was doing comedy for a while. Don't know if he still is. He's pretty decent. Probably one of the best descriptions of the N-word use <laughs> that I've seen. The most enjoyable, fun view of that and some other things that he brings up. But, uh, yeah, it was it was better than I thought. Better than I expected. Uh, other than that, there hasn't been much that we've been really checking out. Just watching our old, same old, same old. Our Spingooly and stuff like that, our old horror stuff. Uh, been stuck on house, house hunting, international episodes and stuff like that. Getting caught up on dreaming about places we'd love to live that will never be. Uh, <laughs> and finding out how expensive places are that we would think wouldn't be that expensive. Uh, but yeah. See, that's cute places. That's cute buildings in areas that are nice weather-wise <laughs> year-round that I could go for, but the wife wants the Four Seasons <laughs> environment. So it's like, We'll never agree. We'll just agree to disagree. But, uh, other than that, it's been pretty, pretty quiet about what's been going on around. Nothing too exciting. I know they just had, like, another... Uh, what's the artist con, uh, artist alley thingy 
in Chicago. That just happened like last weekend. Uh, been some small con events around just comic book sales and stuff like that. But we are hitting September. September is the next big Milwaukee Mighty Con. So looking forward to that. We should have some fun unveilings, unpackings from that, and some other things that we do on that day, hopefully. I'm hoping that we can have a whole day to enjoy for once instead of having to hurry up and only have like three hours to run and do do what we want to do and quickly get back and just not having any life outside of this. I need to get out. I need to do some things. We kind of like missed out on all the whole summertime town wide rummages and stuff. We lost, missed out on all those. It's like we're lucky if on Saturday we get two, three hours to go run our errands and then maybe stop at a couple things if we want in between or maybe stop and see a friend for a half hour and it's like then we gotta get back do our job for free <laughs> uh, yeah what you gonna do but and that's basically a update what's been going on in my world what i've been watching and checking out uh Really wish I could think of some other stuff to talk about, but it's been pretty boring. I do have my new little buddy you might see back here. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a name for him. If you got a name name idea at all, I call him for now. I call him my little boner. <laughs> Just some some little dude I found at a. Like a TJ Maxx, I think it was. I seen him. He actually matches my shirt a little bit. I seen him. They had a good variety of Halloween decorations out. I'm like, he, he'd he be a perfect little sidekick. A little character. Hang out in the background. Podcast. So I had to pick him up. But yeah, for now I just call him my little boner. So... <laughs> You got any ideas for names for them? Toss them my way. See if I hear one that I like. Otherwise, he'll just be the little boner for now. <laughs> Might have him help me do some upcoming comic reads, uh, which I'm hoping that this week I can get at least get one recorded and then hopefully get it put out in the next week or two, depending on how much other stuff I have recorded, if I can get stuff done without too much interruption. Well, you will see what happens. But, uh, yeah. Other than that, that's it for now. Keep following under the call of MS. Rate, review, subscribe, call a friend. Get us those likes. Check out Crimson Color Comic Club. And we will get back with more of these soon. Hopefully more on a regular basis. Or we'll have other stuff. Who knows? We give you too much variety. That's why we can't stick with a regular programming schedule. See what happens. And we'll be back. Bye.